One of the questions that people most frequently ask me if it's, is if it's worth visiting Costa Rica during the rainy season, which is generally accepted to run from May through the middle of November or so. On the Caribbean side, my favorite part of the country, it's not quite as clearly defined. Like it rains the entire year with the driest months being March, September, and October. But generally speaking, the rainy season in the country is considered to be May to November. But rather than, you know, maybe tell you how rainy season is, in the Caribbean zone of Costa Rica and tell you, you know, give you advice about whether you should go or not go. I really think what I'd like to do is just show you some video and some photos from a trip that I took back in 2019. Hey, but first, let's make introductions. That's me. I'm a U.S. born gringo. 11 years ago, I first set foot in Costa Rica to study Spanish at an immersion school and I just kept coming back. So this is my buddy, Jose Pablo. He's from Barva, a little town in Heredia, and he's been visiting the Caribbean with his family since he was a kid. Jose Pablo and I, and sometimes other friends, we travel around Costa Rica. We write about our experiences, passing along travel tips and wisdom. The web address is CostaRicaTravel.tips. Also, please subscribe and, you know, ring that bell so you get notified when we make new videos. The Caribbean coast of Costa Rica is entirely within one province in the country, and that province is called Limon. It runs from the Nicaraguan border to the north all the way down to Panama on the south. And the area that I'm featuring in this video is the area actually that will be south of the provincial capital, Puerto Limon. So this is going to include the towns of Puerto Viejo, Cahuita, and Hone Creek, as well as the Cahuita National Park, the Gandoca Manzanillo National Wildlife Refuge, and especially we'll see some cool video from the Bribri Waterfalls. The nearest airport through which international travelers can arrive is the Juan Santa Maria International Airport, oftentimes referred to as the San Jose Airport, although it's technically not in San Jose, it's in Alajuela, but you know, whatever, that's another video. So the drive from the airport to say Puerto Viejo takes between four and a half and five and a half hours. If you're planning a trip for the, for the first time and you're looking at Google Maps trying to you know estimate how long it's gonna get, how long it's gonna take you to get from like the airport to Puerto Viejo or to Cahuita, do not be fooled by the distances. The roads are mostly two lane. Conditions can quickly become challenging and truthfully the things just go slow. So this is like, this is the main road kind of in the, the area. We're, we're, estamos norte de Puerto Viejo, de verdad? Yes, yes. So, okay, entonces, so we're north of Puerto Viejo going south towards the, uh, towards Puerto Viejo, which is really, I think, kind of a cool, it's a cool, funky town. It's got, um, definitely got a vibe to it. It's because it's low season, um, rainy season, not as much tourism. There are a lot of places that are closed. So a lot of the businesses will be, um, that would be open during high tourism season. In a month. In, in a month, yeah, in a month. So it'll be, they'll be open. Um, but so like probably the busiest time of year for this place is the week leading up to Easter, Holy Week, Semana, La Semana Santa in Spanish. And so, and actually, Jose Pablo was here for Semana Santa, but that is this that was a crowded place. Okay, so it was really crowded, huh? Yeah, super crowded. Um, but now it's really not. I mean, obviously, rainy season, but there's still, I mean, there's still quite a few people. Um, something you'll notice a lot is our people, uh, like bicycles, are really common. So, and it, truthfully, it's a good way to get around. Um, if you think about it, I mean, the the and they're everywhere. People seem to be really good about sharing the road as well. Drivers, uh, you know, depending depending on where you where you come from, you might not live in an area, come from an area where where bicyclists on the road are respected, and it really pretty much happens here. Everybody in cars drives very slowly. Uh, people respect the, the the bicyclists. Oh, by the way, we're passing a really nice new grocery store. It's like I didn't get a very good shot of it, but it's nice and new. It's a Green Market. Mercado Verde, so se llama Mercado Verde. Okay, yeah, Green Market, el Mercado Verde. So you're, ah, cool, Coco Taxi, yes. Ah, those are cool. I have not seen those in any other part of the country. I think uh, solamente hay Coco Taxis aquí en Costa Rica y en Puerto Viejo en este oh, lugar. Okay. okay, yeah, I think so. It's like we've been, we were just the Pacific side a couple days ago, and I didn't see any over there. So this is now this is a serious bicyclist right here. So one of the first places we visited is the Bribri Waterfalls. In Spanish, it's called La Catarata Bribri, and it looks just like this off the road. So it costs a few thousand colones to go down and see the falls. Maybe four or five US dollars is what it came out to. And when you go there, they're gonna offer you a walking stick to help you traverse the terrain. They give you a important piece of advice. Take the walking stick. Don't try to be a tough guy, you'll thank me. 
When we were there, it had just stopped raining, and that means it was a magical time because that is when the frogs come out into the open. At the bottom of the hike, you'll find two small waterfalls that are framed by the greenest forest that I have ever seen. You know, I can't believe that we've gotten this far in the video without looking at the actual beach. So on this trip, we spent most of our time in Puerto Viejo, which really has the biggest variety of food and drink in the area. We went to a really cool bar called Hot Rocks to watch uh, watch some football. I had some delicious, uh, really delicious seafood. It was ceviche, actually, at Nima's restaurant. Would recommend that place as well. But ultimately, I really kind of wanted to explore the area around Cahuita because I hadn't done that before. And so Cahuita is north of Puerto Viejo, and it's a little bit smaller. We really kind of had a little bit of an exploratory adventure. Estamos a punto de entrar a Cahuita aquí? Sí. Ok. Cool. So we're about to actually... Cool. Uh, so there's a corner and there's a soda. Okay, so we need to pause for a second and talk about the food in the Southern Caribbean zone of Costa Rica. It is a delightful blend of flavors and local ingredients such as coconut milk, fish, rice and beans cooked in coconut milk. And one especially delicious food is called pati, which is a spicy filled pastry. It's a little bit like an empanada, but this area in Limon where we are in Cahuita is well known for it. And we just happened to pass a pati landmark. Okay, yes. Uh -huh. El Patima famoso. El Patima? Sí. Ah, uh, the Pati restaurant. Ah. Uh, es el más famoso. Ah, uh, es el más famoso. Es el más famoso restaurant for Pati. Delita Pati. Ah. Uh, bueno, por, por, por la temporada, please. No, por la hora. Ah, uh, por la hora, ok. Sadly, the most famous pâté restaurant in the world was closed, not because of low season, but uh, because it was just too early in the morning. Ah, uh, it's a lovely beach. Cahuita, look at this. This is beautiful. Wow. Sí, me parece, me parece un poquito más relajado, más, más tranquilo en este momento. Somebody's going surfing. Coco's Bar and Restaurant on the corner. We're actually driving towards the beach. It's just like if you look at the very end of that, the end of the road down there, that is the ocean. El Cangrejo Loco. <laughs> it's not open though. 
I way better if she did not. She did not care. So this is almost the point where we started wandering into places that neither of us had been. We took a left turn onto this gravel road up here in just a second, and it runs along the beach. And uh, we saw a lot of really interesting things. Come on, come on, come on, Pienza. Ah, this is cool. This place is called Sobre las Olas. Ah, it's closed until the 26th of June. Closed for the for the season. Black Beach. Welcome to Black Beach. <laughs> Pretty sure that was a buzzard. <laughs> Ooh. Love the speed bumps. So speed bumps have a great name here. People call them muertos, like a dead person, or something that's dead. Muerto, muerto. Muchos muertos por aquí. Probably not the best swimming. All right, so here's some places for sale. Jungle Beach House, title, there's one, there's another one. Email Scott at live, Scotland Todd at live.com for a jungle beach house. Definitely a jungle beach house. It's the jungle for sure. Ah, there's that eagle again. <laughs> Reggae bar. Ha <laughs> ha. This place looks interesting. It was really big on the. It was really big on the uh, on the maps. Tree of Life official wildlife rescue center. It says closed. Oh, said Alum. Huh. Interesting. Vamos a vuelta. Coopsie. Okay, we're gonna turn around. Something that I really like about this place is that there seems to be a pretty overwhelming sentiment of people wanting to make sure that they're good. Um, they are good stewards of the natural resources that are here. Here's one of those Airbnbs by there, one of those B&Bs, Caribbean Coconut is what it was called. I already missed that. But uh, anyway, uh, people seem to be good stewards and there's a there's an emphasis on making sure that uh, uh, that the impact on the environment and on, on nature in general is minimized as much as possible. Oh, this place is huge, look at this. This is massive. La Casa de something, Iris. Uh, Another one of these, just, yeah, check that out, that's beautiful. Aha, uh -huh, our first sloth sighting. He's wet, so he's just like climbing along the line. Look at that. He's just like, hey. I'm just like going through my normal sloth day, doing sloth stuff. I'm just a sloth. So we eventually got hungry and thirsty and uh, went back to actually bar restaurant Coco's and had a really delicious meal. Check this out. Look how great that was. And then saw this just out the window. <laughs> So 
So our next stop on this Costa Rica rainy season Southern Caribbean visit is the Jaguar Rescue Center, which is a home for ill, injured, and orphaned animals in the area. And we took a private tour with this young lady, Ivy, from Texas, who is serving as one of the many volunteers that staff the rescue center. But every time you buy a ticket, it's a donation. For yep. us, so thank you very much. We're not sure. really funded by the government or anything. So more than anything, when people come through, you buy a ticket, you get a little bit of a glimpse into what we're doing here. But that's a, and that, yep. for us, it's a lot in return. We get to build new enclosures. We get to buy medications, buy food, accept new animals. Thank you so much. So visiting the Jaguar Rescue Center was my favorite part of visiting the Southern Caribbean during rainy season because it provided an opportunity to get up close with some of these animals, but in a responsible and safe manner. This room is known as Monkey Kindergarten. <laughs> of course it is. Of course it's Monkey Kindergarten. So the Jaguar Rescue Center was the highlight of this rainy season visit to Costa Rica's Southern Caribbean Zone. And the highlight of visiting the Jaguar Rescue Center was getting up close with some adolescent sloths. You can see there's about three of them in here. There's one up high here. Okay. There's gonna be one in there. And it looks like there's one all the way at the top. Okay. So I'm gonna get over here just to talk to you about them and Great. get out of the way. So with these at this size, and this guy's sitting in his plate, these are going to be about two years old. So at this age, mom is about basically leaving them. Mom will leave the territory to the baby and move on to something else. Okay. So at this age, this is the final year with them of us with them here. They're reaching sexual maturity and then we're going to release them. And you can see that now they're starting to spread out. So when they're babies, because they naturally don't have mom here, mm -hmm. a lot of times they'll cuddle with each other. But as they get older, they'll start to need space from each other, and these are starting to figure that out. This one's over here, this yeah, one's over there. Yeah, they're spreading out. There's one on that branch over there. They're starting to spread out. On top of that, we need them to start climbing a lot more, being able to look a lot more like normal sloths. Like they look like that, like a just like a ball of fur hidden in camouflage. That's perfect. That's what we want them to be doing. So when we release these individuals, we will build what would be called a sloth tower. It's going to look very similar to the smaller, but it's going to be up pretty high in a tree canopy. Uh, and that way, once we are ready to release them, we just have to open the windows, connect ropes to the tree canopies, and then the sloths can basically crawl in and out for as long as they'd like. Generally, they'll do this for an average of about three to four weeks. Wow. And when we see that they've all exited for the last time, we shut the windows and they've officially become wild They're animals. wild. And that's wow. when it's officially they are released. Something really special is that the last group that we released about four months ago, we put radio tracking collars on them. And this is the first time that we've been able really? to do that. Mm -hmm. So somebody goes out every day at 11.30 a.m., goes out and tracks them and sees how much have they moved overnight, how big is their territory, what kind of activity are they partaking in. So they love I'm, the hibiscus. This like, is amazing. I'm so monkeys, sorry. This is just... No, it's fine. Monkey sloths, um, howler monkeys. Humans also like hibiscus. We make teas yeah, out yeah, of it. Yeah. But yeah, the, we did put the tracking collars and this girl, Becky, goes out every day and she tracks these sloths. And She'll do it for two years. Three. 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 Three.
normalmente como unas 12 horas, no, pero no. todos piensan que porque so, se les llaman perezosos, tienen pereza, duermen 22 horas al día, no. pero no es verdad, o sea, duermen durante el día porque son nocturnos y en la noche son muy activos. En la noche, esto, si, si uno vendría en la noche, puedes ver que van a andar moviéndose todos por aquí. Pero bueno, si durante el día duermen. I think it's interesting that the, 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 this animal is has no problem like approaching me looking at me like no so the thing is that they have terrible vision oh. they can smell really well and that's why you see him always putting his nose to things but their eyes are so small they can see in color but visually everything is going to be super blurry for them interesting so okay. that's why another thing is that it's really important for us not to be touching them yeah. because that yeah. stresses them out sure whereas if we're sort of by them they can't really sense us That's not even as useful as touches. So touches is going to be the worst thing for sloths because they don't like us. We look like predators. Yeah. But as long as we're feeding them, we're not messing with them. We're giving them what they need to grow. Then they're fine. Okay. I don't want to do anything that is going to be disrespectful. No, like, like that, they're fine. This some like they just have terrible vision. Does that mean? It makes sense though, since they're nocturnal. They're not yeah. going to be needing that vision so much. See, this guy woke up a little bit. Oh. Look, Floki was born with one nail on each one of oh. his limbs. Oh gosh. So this is a genetic mutation and we're pretty sure that's why his mom his mom abandoned him. Yeah. So he was found on the ground as a baby. He has grown to be basically like any other sloth. He can get around. His favorite spot is up in that corner. And that's it. That is Costa Rica's Southern Caribbean during rainy season. Puerto Viejo, Cahuita, the frogs at the Bribri waterfalls, and of course the Jaguar Rescue Center with Monkey Kindergarten and a close encounter with three sloths. So after that, Jose Pablo and I grabbed coffee and breakfast the next morning at a really good place called De Gustibus. They have really, really good coffee. And we made our way back to the Central Valley. So what do you think? Does the Southern Caribbean of Costa Rica during rainy season look like your particular cup of tea or cup of coffee, I suppose? Leave a comment below. Hit like and subscribe, ring the bell so you can get notifications when we post new videos. And visit the website, costaricatravel.tips.